Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome group publisher, IC Publications, Omar Ben Yedder. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à tout le monde. Nous sommes très heureux d'être ici. C'est un panel qui est très intéressant parce que je ne le comprends pas. C'est un panel parce que je ne comprends pas ce que je veux dire par l'entrepreneuriat. Je n'ai jamais entendu ce que je veux dire par l'entrepreneuriat. Et pourquoi est-ce que cette formule est magique de l'entrepreneuriat, we'll qu'est-ce que c'est qu'un entrepreneur et comment expliquer ce qu'un entrepreneur est tout à fait, c'est-à-dire des gens dynamiques, de créer des entreprises, des entrepreneurs énergétiques, enthousiastiques, daring people who create firms and jobs for our civil societies. I will express myself in English, but there must be translators who are interpreters. And I will introduce the panelists. We have a banker, Kenyo, from Nigeria, who knows Africa as a whole, the founder of a foundation, Kingsley, also in Nigeria, a man from Mali, Isam. Global citizen, on va but dire. he is a Nous citizen of the une, world, uh, la de, and uh, we uh, have the founder of uh, 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 who fiers, that is Sénégal a, et a company uh, based uh, between uh, India and Senegal. Bon. And this is Magat Wade. I'd like to ask you a quick question. Uh, is it harder for entrepreneurs to succeed in Africa? Yes, no. K.O. I would say no. Um, it's easier. One, the government, even if the government does uh, and provides all the opportunities uh, for you, um, it cannot go around. And so out of frustration, out of the fact that lots of basic um, infrastructural facilities are not in place, um, you are spurred, you have the energy you know, to fight back because you want to succeed. So is so it easier or harder? It is easier. Easier in Africa to it be an entrepreneur? Easier. I would say it is easier. Is it easier in Africa to be an entrepreneur than anywhere else in the world? I would say that answer is the answer should be neither here nor there. Uh, it's kind of relative depending on what it is you want to create a change for. But I can say everywhere, every society has peculiar needs. And if there are young people or entrepreneurs who are able to identify those needs, identify those gaps, and come up with 21st century solutions that meet those needs in unique ways, uh, then it makes it easy for them to do that. Issam, is it easier to be an entrepreneur in Africa or is it more difficult? It is more difficult to be an entrepreneur in Africa than elsewhere in the world, but there is no better time than now and no better place than Africa to be an entrepreneur today. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the right time and the right place to be an entrepreneur. Uh, Magat, it's more difficult. Is it because you were able to succeed because or despite existing conditions? There are things uh, that are easier in Africa uh, or uh, more complicated in Africa. It depends what your uh, viewpoint is. It's not an issue of black or white for me. Uh, it's, uh, it's a choice for me. I want to stay in Africa, and I want to succeed whether it's tough or not. Keo, I'll start with you. Keo is a banker, so he's the one who finances entrepreneurs. I think people always complain about the lack of capital for entrepreneurs. But basically, I can see from a banker's perspective, I'm not just going to give my money to anyone. So basically, you want to give money to someone who's educated and who's got the right skill sets. So basically, we're talking about education and entrepreneurship. How do we create people who you can trust with your money, who will then build the businesses that will create those jobs? So what is it that you're looking for, and where is the education system failing us? Okay, first of all, um, the education system um, is geared towards um, creating employees as against entrepreneurs. However, you have pockets of, um, pockets of uh, or oases of uh, institutions across Africa, you know, that is now Get, get towards ed entrepreneurial training. Um, the educational system is not adequate to produce entrepreneurs. Um, uh, infrastructure is not adequate to produce entrepreneurs. But despite that, 
you know, Africa still has uh, the largest number of uh, early stage entrepreneurs. And that is because there are lots of gaps in Africa. There are lots of needs in Africa. And so the man who believes that he can do it, he can solve a problem, he can feel a need, he can feel a gap, he can provide a need, a solution, or an idea to fill a gap, goes all out and actually succeeds a, as an entrepreneur. The first thing is the packaging. Um, how does he make his idea bankable? First of all, um, the banker does not want to take risks. He wants to hedge his risk and mitigate his risk. And therefore, the entrepreneur has to provide a well-packaged and bankable idea. Now, once you start off, you hardly find an entrepreneur who works into a bank, and the bank gives him money, and from there, he builds his business. No, he has started from uh, money from friends, he started from money from family, he has started from his own personal savings. He cuts his business much lower, cuts his coat according to the resources he has, and starts very, very small. Dangote started like that. A lot of the African entrepreneurs started like that. Very, very small, and they gradually grow. Because the typical commercial bank is not out there to give money to entrepreneurs. The typical commercial bank is out there to give money to going concerns. So you need to really make your idea bankable, package it properly, and make it sellable to the banker at some point in the entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, I think I read yesterday from a VC fund, they said that it's not just about ideas, it's about selling a service or a product which people actually want. Magat, I'd like to come to you for two reasons. A, do you think the education system gave you the skills? And if so, what were those skills? Because I think you're a proponent of teaching entrepreneurship at, uh, from an early age at school. And let's start with that question, actually, <coughs> first of all. Donc pour moi, cette, histoire de, cette question d'éducation, elle est tellement well, importante. This issue of education for me is so important that uh, uh, Katjusan's um, en fait company école, today uh, gives a large share of its uh, capital de, uh, to entrepreneurs who want to start up a firm in Senegal. Vois, what uh, is uh, Chosan in, in Senegal? I don't know if many of you know Senegal, but we have a system called Mudumudu. Mudumudu are supposedly not educated people, but people who nonetheless have their own business, who make a lot of money. In my opinion, they are real entrepreneurs. Then I compare them uh, to the uh, Senegalese elite. We go to school and uh, we're lucky. We want to work for NGOs, uh, for a corporation, or for the government. This is not where you find the entrepreneurship mentality. And uh, you see those uh, who are not, quote unquote, educated are natural entrepreneurs, and those who are educated are far from anything close to an entrepreneur. So there are. Um, uh, people who believe in only recruiting people with MBAs, but a lot of other people don't believe in the MBA and will not recruit you because you have one. And uh, everybody talks about incubators today. Imagine you are in a school, perhaps at uh, high school level, primary school level, and every day you do your mathematics homework. Well, in our school, you work on a real project. At the age of nine, you uh, launch a company producing toys, for example. Uh, we are currently undertaking the first trial runs of this idea because that's where we believe the market is for the African products that we actually make and design. You were talking earlier on about the fact that this is the new uh, Silicon Valley, the new entrepreneurship creating uh, cluster, so to speak. And uh, these people have clearly understood that it's not the traditional system that will make 
Et ça, c'est vachement important parce que je m'aperçois que... As entrepreneurial as the parents can be today, despite the fact that they don't have what we call education, as we understood it until now. So, we play leapfrog, so to speak, right now. I'm going to very briefly cover the major points. First of all, respect for design and creativity. Because unfortunately, in our African countries, we don't respect the concept of design and creativity. Uh, parents wants us to, want us to be lawyers, engineers, etc. So this is a very important concept, design and creativity. Secondly, the startup culture, the need uh, to create a firm from scratch. We're, of course, going to have to uh, make sure that the parents are on board with us, and civil society needs to leave us be to succeed in doing what we need to do. And also, uh, children have the right to have their opinion. This has nothing to do with uh, being disrespectful to our parents. This is not what I'm saying. But I think that the young have ideas that they should be allowed to implement. And everyone is talking about capital. Well, today we have hundreds of millions of dollars that are given. I'm not giving you $100 or $1,000 because I want shares in the company and because I want an ROI. I'm saying this because I believe in your project. And the Africans, in fact, do not have the opportunity of levying these funds because we are far from the world that deals with these uh, fund levies through crowdfunding uh, applications. And I can tell you that from now on, the game will need to go get a share of those hundreds of millions of dollars that we just see flying under our nose but never can grab. So also, there's a legal framework. Nobody talks about the legal framework because we're talking about funding. But what do we do about legal frameworks? Uh, in Senegal, if I, uh, in fact, here want to employ someone, I cannot make that person redundant uh, if, uh, if I can no longer pay the salary for this person, for example. Well, that does not encourage me to uh, hire people. And I'll stop here. Here. Not only keep our own entrepreneurs, but also encourage new ones. There are various aspects to making entrepreneurs succeed. Obviously, the government's got a, uh, got a role to play. The individuals have got a role to play. In terms of the education system, uh, I want to go to you, Kingsley. Yes. In terms of the education system, to go back to what uh, Magat was saying, do you think that the education system is antiquated? We want to become lawyers, we want to become doctors, although we need both lawyers and doctors, actually. We don't just need entrepreneurs, we need a bit of everything. But do you think that there needs to be a shift in what we're doing at the education level to create the sort of people who will then take risks? I think you're, like, you're saying we're, we're, there's a lack of risk taking, who will take risks and who will do things differently, who will be able to, ch who are not afraid to challenge the status quo. I mean, I would say very big yes. And I really agree with what she, 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 she was just sharing. We need to rethink uh, current uh, educational architecture in Africa because, like, like you said, uh, the education produces graduates to look for jobs. And yet Africa has possibly the biggest infrastructural and, and social challenges. And we're interesting, even our education is producing more social scientists and we need most of the engineers, right? And so you find people spend several years in school just preparing for jobs that basically do not exist. And interestingly, we're even using outdated curriculum, so by the time they are out, uh, their skill set and knowledge does not match 21st century job uh, place uh, requirements. So for me, I do completely agree that we need to redesign our educational architecture. And I agree with what she's, 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 she's sharing, and I, I shared that with you. So we're trying to model something called a thinking school. And what we're trying to do is to begin to look at the culture of innovation, you know, which is I mean, a subsect of the entrepreneurship culture, just, just beyond just starting up a business. Uh, most of the high-tech things we, need, we use in Africa come from outside Africa. Interestingly, most of the raw materials are back home in Africa. So you can see that there is a gap in kind of knowledge and a community of people who can look at these raw materials and come up with solutions that can help translate them into products that we can use. So create jobs around here, create wealth around here, and possibly market 
across Africa. So uh, uh, we've started what we call Thinking School. We did our first pilot last year. And as the name is, that's how the concept is. We want to bring young people together and begin to look at problems in Africa, but see how we can create hybrid solutions. And so we stay there and think and innovate. One of the challenges we've found is that the African culture does not encourage experimentation. And you cannot innovate without experimentation. So even if you go to an investor, you go to a donor, they're not willing to give you money to experiment. They want to give you money for 100% proof success. And so through our program, the idea is create this kind of enabling environment where you can bring in young people, sit down and ideate and be mentored. And then eventually, uh, a number of them come out with uh, breakthrough ideas that we can support. And, and for me, that is a great model. Uh, I was just looking at a review of, of Gabon. Over the next couple of years, I think the government is going to be building about 330 primary schools and uh, maybe 55 secondary schools and investing maybe $600 million in education from what I read. And I was looking at that to say, well, is there a special focus maybe to create an innovation school? Because why do I need to spend uh, maybe 14 or 16 years acquiring an education that eventually I may not use? So why don't we create a new model that says, for instance, in, in Switzerland, which ranks in Global Innovation Index, they have a policy that says, after secondary school education, you have the option to go learn innovation or develop a unique skill. And if you want to continue education, you can do that. And the report says about 70% of their secondary school graduates up for that. And so it's not surprising that Switzerland continues to top the Innovation Index. The first African country in the lineup is uh, Mauritius, 40 because around Africa, we're not promoting the culture of innovation. And I think it's something we need to begin to look at. My proposal is uh, we need to begin to create these special schools. If you get out of secondary school, you come spend one year, and it's an innovation-specific module. And then you can now pick the most viable young people that are coming with new products and give them the support that they need, because we really have that energy and, 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 and capacity here in Africa. What we just need is an enabling environment and the support. So you've been working with youth groups for yes. the past 20 years. Yeah which is a long period of time. Yes. So over those 20 years, hopefully you've seen trends. Do you see that the output from the education system 20 years ago is better or worse than it is today in terms of the way people think, the way people are, in terms of their analytical skills as well, just the basic skills that we need to succeed anywhere, which is basic, basic analysis, being able to understand a problem and come up with a solution, discussion, communication. Uh, basically, it's also important to, to lay a foundation, and which is that our African education does not is not premised on the on the, on, on the on the principles you've talked about, which is cognitive thinking and all of that. It's an education that just prepares you to go get a job and and and, and earn wages and do your basic 35 years. So basically, that is a big defect in the quality of education. But what have I seen over the last 20 years working with young people across West Africa is that there is, first of all, I would say the quality of education. I do not think is increasing, even though we are seeing the pr proliferation of more schools across Africa, but we are not seeing increase in standard. We are not seeing increase in quality, right? And that is why you see a huge number of Africans go to countries outside Africa to acquire education. But what I can say is there is a rising awareness among young people that today's education does not give them the advantage to match their counterparts Africa in, around the world because jobs have become global. If you're seeking for a job right now, you put it on the internet, anywhere, anyone anywhere in the world can bid for that job. And so the African students and youths are beginning to find that they do not have the, uh, that advantage. So what are African young people doing? They are going on to the open source and learning, acquiring new set skills that gives them that kind of advantage. And that's why we see the culture of entrepreneurship bubbling across the continent. Isam, I'd like to come to you now. Isam, you're a specialist in incubators. Someone like Magat, for example, succeeded without having to go through an incubator. Can you tell us a little bit about what an incubator is there for and what needs to be done on the continent to help, I take it incubators is more for tech companies, to help these tech companies develop and grow and scale up, which is obviously what we're all after. In any problem, you have to start by analyzing. Uh, in any investment problem in, that I'm specialized in, you start first by analyzing the problem. If you talk about entrepreneurship, why entrepreneurship? 
Africa has the, the biggest uh, amount of young people in the world, more than 70% uh, young people, and you can't find a job when you get out of school. You want to, you finish your studies and you can't find a job. And the only problem you have is that you're not all alone. All African countries have the same problem. So don't think it's just a problem in Europe. You have to find a general solution. But to get back to the issue, why can you not find a job? Well, the number of companies that exist in the economy in African countries is not enough to give you work. So there's a problem uh, that happened. This happens. So what can you do to create companies that are going to be able to hire young people and so they can have work after the study? And that's where you get back to the idea of creating companies, to founding companies. To do that, you need several things. Uh, you can talk about an ecosystem of entrepreneurship. Now, in this type of ecosystem, at the very heart of that, you have yourself as a young person who wants to uh, be an entrepreneur. And we talked about that with Mr. Jiao, who is the CEO of ESM. And he said to me that in his generation, he succeeded a great deal in Senegal, and many students go to study in that ESM university. He said in his generation, out of four people, they decided to continue to be entrepreneurs, three were orphans. Uh, had no mother. And we talked this morning. He said, well, this shows you that the family is against taking risk to move towards entrepreneurship. So that's a key, uh, a key point in, uh, in developing nations. If you decide to move in this direction, your family has to support you uh, to get this ecosystem up and running. If, if, and that's the first barrier, potentially. And we already have more difficulties. But in addition to that, the, the point that he raised, if the family is not supportive, you go to incubators. You say, OK, that's good. That's a place where you can go. You can create things and have internet connection. You don't have to pay for it. Um, you have access to infrastructures and other people who are in the same situation as you. Uh, and that's a support for creating a company. So that's why we talk about uh, these incubators. But the word incubator, you, you you have, a, you know, you have air conditioning, you've got coffee, you have internet, and so forth. There's a lot of factors you need in addition to that, because there's no point in creating an incubator just for the sake of doing so. There are other things that are important. Last year, for example, I was in Amsterdam. I was in one of these networks talking about Africa and development, and I met some investors, people that had succeeded in business and that decided they want to give something back and invest back in what young people are wanting to do in, in, the, in, the, Netherlands. in the Netherlands. So if you have an incubator, you have an idea, it's great. That's all very well and good. They said, what do you do today when you go home? They said, well, I didn't have find a job still. You, you still. So you're still frustrated. You have a great idea. you got a prototype. But if there's nobody there to give you a boost, Boost. What are you going to do with it? And that's your die stops dead in the track. So you need an incubator. But that's not the case in Africa. Uh, they don't move forward in Africa. I know that Gabon is currently developing in Kume. Uh, uh, raise your hands. We just talked about that. And the idea is to link a startup fund to an incubator. And I think the promoters of the project are thinking exactly of that. And that is another very important aspect. And there are different aspects that need to combine to make it happen. Uh, and because obviously, in terms of taxes, uh, starting up a startup can't pay the same level of taxes. There's a lot of factors there. And to conclude, I'd just like to talk about industry. We want to create companies, but what sector? And a lot of people say we want to do mobile apps. You know that 50% of jobs that are going to be creating, created in Africa have to come from agriculture. 3% will come from telecom. 1% of the jobs created in Africa will come from oil. So 1% of the jobs come from oil. So why not look at agriculture? Most of the food products are imported into Gabon, and that's where the government can play a really important role. Why don't they say we're going to prohibit gradually importing eggs. We eat a lot of bread. What if we encourage local entrepreneurs to develop, uh, can sell uh, products to bakeries and so forth to make our own bread? We need to focus on that little industry, uh, agriculture. And then in that, you, you just work on eggs or whatever. And you maybe you can restrict importations from South Africa and to encourage with this fund to, that's going to create incubators to move in that direction. And you'll have fewer 
people on unemployment. Uh, obviously, there are other details to be looked at. Two things I'd like to say. I agree so much with you about new technologies, and this, they're running after apps. Um, they sold, you know, I think they sold to set Facebook for like a billion dollars for 10 staff. Do you think they're worth a billion dollars? You're going to reduce unemployment with those 10 employees? There's a hundred, hundreds of millions of jobs that are lacking. I don't think that's going to work. We need really to get moving on what is linked to industry. Another thing I wanted to say is, you know this whole problem of schools. And this is not only in Africa, it is throughout the world. School as we know it today is inadequate for the future. It, whether it be in the US, in Europe, here, everybody has the same problem. So what I say is, an African, we have an opportunity to do something and teach other people what real schools should do for real people and get them to respond to their real needs of the future. So we have that possibility ahead of us. A lot of future employments will be done by robots. A lot of things are being taught in schools that are be going to be done by robots. Do you need to get trained for this type of job? If you don't want to work, that's a good idea. So either you, either you do it or you don't. You want to be a leader or a follower? You need you, the existing models just aren't going to cut so, it. Okay, I'd like to go to individual responsibilities. The government's obviously got its role to play and it's uh, to, to, to produce the right business climate. What's the individual responsibility? The individual responsibility of the youth? They can't have it on a plate. Ultimately, they're going to need to, they need to fight for it. They need to go and study, look for it, read about it. What is the individual responsibility of an entrepreneur? Well, the the, the um responsibility of uh, you and I, of um, the individual, is one, get your idea, get your solution, get your product. Two, and it's called the four P's of marketing. You can follow it religiously. Position it at a good price. Do your research on how you want to promote it and at which place or which channels you want to use to disseminate it or to sell it. So it's just the four piece, product, price, promotion, place. Once all that research is done, have the can do, do not give up. There's nowhere in the world where sole proprietors find it easy, nowhere in the world. You have to have the fire, you have to, you have to be able to do it, you must not give up. Just keep going till the funding comes. Funding is not easy anywhere, but just keep going Start with savings, start with friends, start with families before you go to the formal, the formal sector. And the funds will come. Once you have the idea, the funds will follow. I'm yet to see anyone who has the funds and then gets the idea and succeeds. You have the idea, you have the product, the funds definitely will follow if you do not give up. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have final comments from each of the panelists, so Kingsley. Yeah, my, I mean, my fi final comment will be we need to rethink education and begin to create a kind of education that empowers our young people to become innovators. For every 100 schools we're building, we should have one or two special schools for young people who want to innovate. This is a model that is working around the world. And like she said, if education is a big issue around the world, this is a great opportunity for Africa uh, to, 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 to teach something new. Hopefully, when we come back next year to Gabon, uh, we should be seeing some kind of model around that. You can pilot a small model of innovation schools and let's see how this grows. If we find one breakthrough disruptive innovation from one of these schools every year, it will leapfrog Africa. My last message would be for the young people in Gabon. I've heard that I'm, not, I'm talking a bit politics. I've heard that the political parties are, are trying to influence young people on campuses. If I have one message for you is don't listen to these messages. If you have a problem, whether it's the current government or the next government, you tell them what are your recommendations and you follow those, because if it's to be influenced like sheep by political parties, do not know what you want to do. Uh, and there will be consequences in, in, in Mali or in Egypt. You'll be worse off than before. 
So whatever you do, my advice I give to you is sit down, draw up concrete proposals and the next steps and the concrete steps you need with all the stakeholders you want to involve and follow that. That's very precise. It's minute. It's specific. I talked about eggs. Ask the government to stop and gradually stop importing eggs over the next few years and, uh, and start producing. In Gabon. And we'll talk about that in a few years. Two things. The first of which is whoever you are, wherever you start and wherever you are, you have to always know one thing and be convinced of it in your gut. And what you're in your very being, whatever the way you start, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is work, but intelligent work. It doesn't matter how old you are, what, where you're from, what class you're from. It doesn't matter. Who cares? That's the advantage of entrepreneurship. It doesn't matter because the best guy wins. Everybody can participate. And the other thing is that it's something I would ask of you. It's a challenge that I have for myself, and you might as well share it. Uh, let's put pressure on. We talked about the fact that we can be a new model. The school I want to create in, in Senegal, give me just two years to come back here and talk to you once again in two years through, or through media. We'll see that now we have Americans that are sending their children to Senegal to be trained. Now that is going to happen. Thank you. I can tell you that people often say that you've also got to be lucky in life, lucky in business. But I can tell you that all of my panelists here, they work extremely hard. And as a golfer once said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. But uh, I'd like a quick round of applause to all our panelists, please. You've done an excellent job. Thank you. I'm very sorry this panel had to be short, but we're running out of time. I'd like to thank you for uh, being a great audience today and for attending this year's African Citizen Summit. Thank you very much. A round of applause to you as well. And uh, before we close, we're going to uh, welcome amongst us a, locally, a local Gabonese choir, Angels ABC, who are going to entertain us with a performance of their work. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we can go and sit there, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry it was short. Africa, Africa, jeunesse africaine.
africaine, Africa, Africa, jeunesse africaine. Africa, Africa, jeunesse africaine, Africa, Africa, jeunesse africaine, Africa, Africa, jeunesse africaine.